Hi, my name is uh, Jar Nicholson and the title of my paper is Investigating the Application of BIM on Small Scale Construction Projects. Currently I'm working for uh, RPS as an engineer. Uh, I have a master's degree in research, or I'm currently undertaking a master's degree uh, uh, by research in building information model at GMIT. I have an honours degree in architectural technology. I'm a certified professional BIM authoring tool. I'm lecturer in BIM modules at GMIT to level seven, and level eight, and I've trained many professionals in the industry. And I've also worked on 20 BIM projects varying in sizes. I'd also like to thank Jim O'Connor and um, Patrick Tobin for their contribution to the paper. So currently in uh, RPS Group, uh, we're training eight staff. Um, they've undertaken a BIM module. Uh, over a 12 week period. Uh, this is going to be a special purpose award approved by GMIT and recognised for 10 ECTS credits at level 7. And also thanks to RPS for their support. So the aim of the research it was to determine the value of BIM in the Irish construction sector. We carried out the study in parallel with the traditional construction processes. So the benefits to that was BIM is a communication tool uh, in relation to BIM, its ability to improve construction documents and the quality of design, its use as an injury analysis tool, uh, advantages of 7D BIM, compare the amount of communication and information available, and the ability to adhere to project schedule, uh, and also uh, meet project profits. Ooh, this is the wrong one. <laughs> this isn't the right. Okay, I'll just keep going. Um, so basically, oh, this is just the wrong slide. I didn't give this, sorry. Okay, um, so 3D uh, building. Um, so basically, we've done a three dimensional model uh, which involved the fabrication model and the actual design model. Um, we also have 4D, uh, which was the phasing of the construction project, which was a simulation or an animation of the construction processes uh, in line with the uh, project schedule. Um, we also done clash detection, which uh, involves the process of finding conflicts within the a single model or between models. It is seen as a collaboration tool and coordination tool. Uh, we have 5D BIM then, uh, BIM can reduce uh, a material takeoff at any stage of the construction process. We also have 6D, uh, which BIM allows users to analyse different designs with regard to orientation, um, climate, space heating, thermal values and different building elements in the building. So 7D then. Um, Basically, we have non-graphical information and graphical information. And this accounts to 68% of the life cycle, life, life cycle costs of the actual building. So I suppose to get on to my case study now, um, this is just all over the place. Um, so the main case study in the research was conducted during the implementation stage. And this is a new ambulance centre in Tum, County Goway. Um, thanks to Kerry Developments and all the, all the stakeholders that were involved. So again, we produced 3D models, 4D models, and we took a 5D material estimation, and we prepared a 7D operation and maintenance model as well, and extracted Kobe out of that. So. Um, some results then, um, 3D BIM models are excellent resource for communicating the design intent of the building. Uh, Joe McKay's study, uh, Alan Mangi, described it as invaluable in communicating the size, scale and quality of the building facilities. So some clashes then, um, clashes were easier to anticipate uh, compared to drawing in 2D CAD. This was due to the ease at which the design was visualised, reduces human error associated uh, with creating drawings. If BIM was used at the design stage, 
At the design stage, the project could have increased quality of construction documents and increased constructability of the building. Um, this is just one, one of many clashes that was found. So obviously here we have a cabinet and a mop, mop sink beside it. Then when we went to actually site at the end of the project, we could see um, it was clearly going to hit our actual sink. So there was 15 drawn, em drawn emissions found, 8 annotation errors, 13 coordination errors were, were identified, 10 of which were hard clashes, three, 3 of which were clearance clashes, 2 errors, um, Two errors also occurred because of misinterpretation. So then our 5D then, um, the BIM model was within 0.5% of the estimates made by the subcontractors, um, so the block, block work. And the amount of concrete estimate was within 1% of the quantity of errors estimate. Model techniques can have a major effect on the quantities taken from the model. There were some issues with estimations taken, and limitation of BIM needs to be known by both the estimator and the actual modeler on the project. It could be used as a check-in system, and will then give confidence to quantitative error and their estimates. Um, so, on this case study, energy analysis of the building was too late to impact the decisions at the construction stage. But at the design stage, the ease at which the BIM model can be analysed would have impacted the orientation, materials used, and the overall energy usage. Also, the HSC outlined uh, must meet a BER certificate of A3. However, they did, not, they did not meet this criteria based on the architectural drawings. A change order was issued rectifying this, which amounted to 3,108. The energy analysis capability of BIM could have also led to better design confidence and accuracy in, accuracy and in costs. So, um, from uh, as built drawings, um, 12 drawing errors were identified in the as built, all of which were a result of failure to update the design drawings. All errors were found and would have, could have been avoided in the BIM model. The safety file for the two mam space was compiled by the site manager on closing the project and was a labour-intensive labor process. When using BIM, the safety file is compiled electronically. The operations and maintenance data was instantly extracted into a Kobe Excel sheet and the information was automatically attached into an interactive 3D model. So, we used a, a control chart to measure and to find out the amount of gaps in the information needed to carry out certain activities in the project. We used the number of official inquiries, the RFIs, inquiries made at meetings and CVIs during the project. So you can see here there were certain activities that are well over um, the actual average amount that was needed. So, from this, you can see that the, that the activities that were on schedule had less gaps in the information. For example, the aver average amount of information needed for before, during, and after are shown in this graph. So you can see on average, um, the, the, the activities that were on schedule before need 1.8 8 on average communications, and then the over, over schedule activities proven that the over, the, there's more information needed uh, and there's more information gaps um, in the ones that are over schedule. We used um, the lack of information um, cause, does, does the lack of informa information cause an effect? We investigated the cause of delays and used the Pareto uh, Principle. We found that, that four activities related to the MEP could have been could have time saved on them. This amount is seven percent of the project schedule. Um, assuming that the labour costs were passed on to the main contractor, as has occurred previously, a saving of 1.4 percent of the total construction costs could have been made by the main contractor. 
So our conclusions then, BIM is a powerful communication tool. The BIM process improves the quality of work. BIM can serve as an accurate cost estimation tool. However, it should be used as a check-in system until all limitations are known. BIM is very useful for creating a safety file and operation and maintenance of the building at the end of the project. In the BIM process, the information is front-loaded and this could help prevent de delays on site. Using BIM can have a significant saving in terms of the number of days on the construction team spent on site. From analysing the BIM savings, labour cost savings on the mechanical and electrical activity alone would have, would have amounted to 1.4% of the total construction costs. Uh, so then, some of my conclusions then, BIM is more successful if employed at the design stage. Any errors that are in the actual original documents carry, carry through to the actual BIM model as well. So there were certain instances that where there was problems in the actual 2D drawings and they went into the actual BIM model as well. For a complete BIM model, all stakeholders must be BIM enabled. For 7D BIM, uh, the product manufacturers must be BIM enabled in some sort of way. Um, I recommend that there should be a national uh, BIM implementation strategy should be put in place. Uh, the, a strategy similar to the UK uh, implementation plan. So thanks for listening. Thank you, Jared. Um, I'll take a couple of questions for Jared now while you have those questions fresh in your mind. Um, so, if we have the roving mic. Hi, Jared. You mentioned the use of Kobe, and yeah. I just wondered if you could expand a bit on that. And also, was IFC considered? Sorry. Um, say that again. Sorry. Could you? Um, you mentioned the use of Kobe. Yeah. And I was just wondering, was IFC considered, or if you could expand on the use of Kobe? Um, yes, it was. Um, I, I, I changed the format of the actual file into an IFC, and then used a uh, different software package then to convert it into a Kobe Excel sheet. So that's that's what I saw it on. Any other questions? Okay, I'll just ask you a question myself, Sam. Sorry. Uh, did you consider at any stage um, linking the, 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 the model to carbon databases or get, uh, tagging materials, or did, did you discuss that at all as part of the research? Um, no, we wanted to see what we could get straight from the actual BIM model, from the energy analysis packages like Ecotech or there's other, other software packages like that as well. But we didn't see a significant impact because we're at the construction stage. In right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you, you mentioned that you had problems when it came to BIM 5 um, and getting proper quantities. Could you elaborate a bit on that? Like how, how reliable was the BIM model for generating um, usable quantities? Well, what I thought from, basically I, I used different modeling techniques and some of them worked and some of them didn't. And I found that the person who is doing the estimations and the person who is modeling are connected. So basically the models can be off and in my model they were off. So I think the limitation of BIM need to be known before you go straight, right, I'm taking all the estimations from the actual BIM model, but you still need to check it, I think. Um, but again, if the limitations are known, there may be no need. 